Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the first show of the summer. Norwich City's championship season is almost here, of course, on Saturday at home against uh, Hull City. Uh, and with that, delighted to be joined by Hull City fan Ant Northgraves from the Hull and Back podcast. Um, Ant, first and foremost, how are you today? You know, I suppose the season's almost here. How are you feeling? Excited. Um, well, I mean, all the football fans hate the off-season. Uh, there's not to talk about, especially content creators. Like I say, it's hard to had to make stuff when you're not to talk about, but um, we've had a, we've had a relatively quiet summer compared to last year, so it's been quite boring. But it'd be nice to actually watch some football again and and, and see what Rosini's got this uh, got this side whipped into. Yeah, fifteenth place finish last season. Uh, Rosini are coming in in November, and he, he sort of seemed to get you guys going a little bit. Of course, it was a little bit difficult where where you, you'd have been left before. But I suppose what's the feeling from from the whole city fan base this season? Is it a case of trying to sort of push for the top six, or or are you maybe more looking at mid table and sort of building maybe for the future? I think um, at least if it's up in mid table, I would say top twelve, him, and then maybe top ten. I think realistically, that's probably where we will end up but there is there's there's every chance that this squad's capable of fighting for the top six and um it'll all depend on whether or not we can solve the the issue of, of, of goal scoring because that was our only real achilles heel last season um under Avaladze defensively we were, we were really really poor conceding two or three goals a game i think we had the worst defensive record in the league and then since rosinia came in in his 28 games we only lost six of those and had the fourth or fifth best defense in the division so you know, we just drew 14 of those games, which obviously is the biggest problem. I mean, we made us hard to beat, which was his aim. Um, but if we can just turn some of those draws into wins, then, you know, you, you, you've got, you're giving yourselves your best chance of, of fighting for those top six places. And hopefully those, um, that that lack of cutting edges is, is, is just a problem for last season and not this one. Yeah, pre-season is always difficult to gauge where teams are. I know Norwich are unbeaten, but that doesn't really ever mean much. How's pre-season yeah. been for Hull? I saw you were out in Turkey playing against sort of some of the big boys out there. So how's that sort of played out? Yeah, we've had an unbeaten pre-season too. Um, I mean, nobody really looks into results of it. Obviously, Rosini has tried to give every single player the same amount of minutes in every game. Um, so we've, we've pretty much fielded like a different 11 at the start and then switched them at around the 60-minute mark and then... The, the next 11 player kind of thing and we actually even played four quarters against Grimsby I think it was two it was four lots of 30 minute games it's very it was quite weird um each team got an hour with 30 minutes being the half time it was, that was quite bizarre uh but yeah we went out to Turkey uh played Galatasaray was 3-0 down against them in the first 35 minutes and came back to win 4-3 so that was quite thrilling for a friendly game um then obviously went to um Hatay Spor where the earthquake was our owners got um obviously he was he was very big on helping with the relief there, so that kind of was a uniting sport kind of moment thing. Um, and then since then, we've only really played sides down, you know, Scunthorpe, Grimsby, local sides. Um, and it's been one of those where it's you, you, you see the same problems we saw last season in these friendly games, but then you also don't want to overlook it because it's pre-season game. So hopefully that's just because the players are only playing at 25-50% because they don't want to get injured and they're saving the real showcase for the season. But um, at the minute, it's just looking very similar to last season where we're hard to beat but struggle to put the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, you just mentioned your ownership there. It seems like sort of the last 18 months has been relatively positive for Hull City fans. Of course, you had a difficult spell under your previous ownership. What, what, what sort of changes has he brought to the football club? It feels like maybe the communication with the fans is back again. Oh, 100%. I mean, he 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 probably communicates too much, which is his problem. Uh, he's, he's a very, he's a big, big personality. He's, he's, he's very active on social media and he just he loves the city and the fans, and you can tell it's genuine. I mean, he just wants the best for the club, and sometimes he, he perhaps gets a bit too excited in that sense and rushes his decisions and, and maybe doesn't think about them a bit logically. But no, yeah, he's been absolutely brilliant. I mean, he's he's brought positivity back. You know, he's brought ticket prices down for us all, fixed the membership scheme. Um, you know, fans are coming back into the stadium. I think we've sold over fifteen thousand memberships this season, and we were getting eight or nine thousand in the stadium at games under the alarm. So, you know, the fans are coming back. Um the positivity's back, the optimism's there. Um he's done amazing gestures like he paid for um for the vast majority of the away games last season. We had free travel to he took two hundred and fifty plus uh, city fans on a five star trip to Turkey, all expenses paid. You know, he's just he, he's invested heavily in the club, you know, he, he genuinely has a a project that he's working on. And it feels like now that Rosini is here, that the project's really started. Um, you know, Rosini's problem is that he's inherited somebody else's squad. And we've maybe got our hands tied a bit FFP-wise um, because of how much we spent last summer. So he hasn't really had the chance to bring in as many players, I would imagine, as he wanted to. 
Um, but his his adaptability with this current squad is 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 admirable in, in obviously what he's achieved so far with them. So yeah, Adjun and, and Rosini seems like the dream pairing for me and, and every city fan's very, very excited about you know what we could achieve under him. Yeah, you just touched on the transfer business there and maybe not bringing in as many players as you wanted, but you've you've done some relatively good business from afar. You know, Vinagria, a player that was successful at mm. Wolves in the Championship. Uh, Delap, of course, on loan from Manchester City. The likes of Connolly returning from a loan spell last season and where it was you know, looked from afar pretty good. So how would you maybe rank the transfer business you've done this summer? Is it sort of relatively positive, would you say? Yeah, it's mostly, uh, I think it's mostly positive, but Realistically, I mean, I'd, every City fan will say something different, but I don't think the squad needed that much um, in terms of being added to it. It just needed players to stay fit because we had so many injuries last season and, and that was what sort of derailed any consistency that we could find, Was especially towards the end of the season where we actually played with no recognised strikers on the pitch because they were all injured. Um, so this season, you know, we've, we've recruited players that Rosinia believes in, that they're exciting, that they're a bit, you know, they've got points to prove kind of thing and um, the the only real negative that we've got so far is that we haven't managed to bring in a goalkeeper. Um, I think he really wanted, you know, we went for Carl Dalla. We had him on loan last season, and he was perfect for the the, the system and quality keeper. Um, just got priced out of it in the end, wages wise. Um, can't compete with the sides that come down parachute payments. So he's gone to Leeds in the end, uh, which is a bit of a stab to the heart. <laughs> but it's 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 one of those. I mean, Delap's young. Um, he didn't exactly set the league alight last season uh, with Stoke and Preston, but we're hoping that it's just you know it, sometimes it takes a particular manager, a style of play, club philosophy, it, it, it literally anything just to make it tick for a player. And we're hoping that's here. He's he's looked very promising pre-season in terms of his hold-up play and his link-up play, and we're hoping he can be that base to allow Oscar to go into the box and do the things that he's best at, which is just goal poaching, because uh, holding the ball up's not Oscar's game at all. Um, Vinagre, like we said, very exciting. Him and Christie as wing backs is is very exciting. Uh, probably, you know, in terms of attacking sense, absolutely. You know, having them overlapping is brilliant. Um, Jason Aquilo is a bit of an unknown quantity. He was at Doncaster a few years ago as a youngster, uh, and he's been abroad. We brought him in from Sparta Rodham, I believe, and he's had a few good seasons abroad. So hopefully, he keeps that momentum going with us as a as a tricky winger. Um, and I'm and I'm, I, we just brought in Aaron Connolly yesterday, who, who was on who was here on loan last season. He played really well for five games. That he was fit, uh, and then got injured for the rest of the, the loan spell. And I didn't personally think Rosini would go back in for him because of that injury, but um, he's he's obviously changed his mind. He's brought him in on a permanent for a one year deal, which is relatively low risk. Um, obviously, if he if if he comes and he likes the league light, like, we can you know give him another contract in summer. Uh, but if he comes, he's injured, then, you know, he, he gets released in summer. So it's a bit of a win-win. Uh, but him, in terms of being a partner to Oscar and and, and potentially the lap as well, you know, it's it's quite exciting to have them. So we, we've done okay. We just need maybe another left-back as cover for Vinagra because we're very thin in that sense. Um, and uh, another goalkeeper. And then I think we're pretty much sorted. Yeah, you've mentioned him a few times there. Oscar Estepinian, 13 goals last season, two of which came against Norwich uh, back in last <laughs> August. Uh I saw today he's back in training. Looks like he's going to probably be available for the game on Saturday. Is he maybe the key man to look out for, or is there somewhere that's or someone, sorry, that's under the radar maybe that Norwich fans should be wary of? Um, on paper, um, Oscar would probably be a lot uh, the player that a lot of teams highlight as the potential danger. Obviously, he scored 13 goals in his first season in the Championship, and he probably missed between two two months, two and a half months through either injury or suspension as well. So he could have had nearly 20 goals had he been fit. Um, but the thing is, is he probably hasn't played very well in, in more than five. Um, so he's one of those who he's literally a goal poacher. He's there in the box. He'll pick up off the scraps. He'll force errors from defenders because he's a bit of a handful in terms of pressing and, and whatnot. Um, but in terms of our style where we were playing like a 4-3-3, he, he, he didn't really lead the line as that lone striker very well. That's not his game. He looked like he's back to goal. Um, holding the ball up and bringing other players in. Like I said, he wants to be running into the box late and getting on the end of things. So um the, the the players that are really crucial to us at the minute is 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 you know Sean McLaughlin, Alfie Jones absolutely turned our defence around last season. Uh, but Regan Slater, um I'm I'm not sure how much now the league is starting to take notice of him because we we've been saying he's been underrated for two or three years now, but I think people are starting to take note. Um goals go he scores goals, creates goals, comes back, defends, he does it all, he's box to box. Um he'll play anywhere you tell him to, 110% every game, one of those who's a seven or eight every week. Um, he's absolutely crucial to us, I think, Slater. I think if he wasn't in the side, we'd absolutely miss him. 
Um, you know, he's he's industrious. He, he he works so hard, and and he'll he'll put his all on the pitch. So, personally, I would say Regan Slate is the one that that makes us tick. So he'd be the one to keep an eye on. You mark him out the game, then you'll be okay. Yeah, of course. Hull City not won at Cow Road since 2010. So, what's that sort of in terms of an opening day fixture? Is that is that something you looked at when it came out and thought that's a, a winnable game, or or maybe fear in the worst? You see, there's there's two ways to look at it, and we don't tend to do well at these grounds where we we, we haven't won for a long time. There's a, there's a reason, and we we tend to go there and struggle to win. Um, and Norwich Norwich away especially tends to be one of those bogey games. So you look at it and think, oh, great, nice start to the season. But I see it as um, one of those where it's, I'd like it as a, it's an acid test to start the season. Like if we want, if we genuinely want to be a side that's going to be up in the top 10 and, and, and chasing the top six, then these are the kind of games that you, you want to be going in and proving yourselves and, and trying to come away with three points in. Now, I'd 100% take a point um, if it was offered right now. Um, I think that'd be a good start. We've got Chef Wednesday at home the next game. So it'd be a, a nice base to go into that game with. Um, and at least a promising performance. But yeah, it's going to be a very tough game, I think. Um, personally, like I say, it's one of those where it's better to get it out of the way early. So if we can come out of this with a win, I think it's a bit of a signal of intent um, on our behalf uh, for the rest of the season that you know we can come away with a place, uh, from a place like Carroll Road with three points. It it shows where we've come as a squad and, and, and that we mean business kind of thing. So yeah, I'm quite excited at it. Yeah, before we just focus in on the game, just intrigued to get your thoughts on Norwich City and how they'll you know, sort of uh, feature this season in the championship. Of course, last season was a, a pretty difficult campaign for us, you know, expected to probably be in the top six mix and end up with a 13th place finish. So, uh, yeah, some, sorry, from a Norwich, uh, sorry, a fan from afar, how, how do you sort of feel Norwich will do this season? Yeah, it's, it, they're, they're an interesting um, prospect, like a bit similar to Watford, really, in, the, in that you expected them to do far better than they did last season. And um, you look at them this season and, and I don't, I'm not going to pretend I'm an expert on on all things that Norwich have done this summer, but um, for me, they don't seem to have strengthened enough to 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 force themselves into that top six slash top two question because I think Norwich and Watford are still in because uh, it's only a recently relegated from the Premier League kind of situation. You should still be in a situation where you could be challenging to go straight back up for the next two or three seasons kind of thing. But I just don't see. It. I think you're better positioned than what Watford are. Uh, definitely. I think you'll be in and around the top 10 at least. Um, but whether or not you've got um, what, it, what 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 it takes to get into the top six this season. Because it's similar to us. Like I think we can challenge the top six, but I don't think we've got it because it's such a strong league this season. Um, you've got to be consistent. You've got to have um, p- players that can score goals from all over the squad. Um, and you've got to be able to, to you know, e- e- every game you're going to come under a period of pressure. Um, and can you come out of that pressure without conceding? So, uh, yeah, I, Norwich are definitely one of those that could get the top six, um, but personally, I don't think they will. Um, but uh, definitely an interesting one to keep an eye on. Yeah, certainly lots of pressure on David Wagner early this season. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I just wondered uh, whether Liam Rossini knows his best 11, would you say, at this point? Of course, he's coming down to Cairo pre season, as we've already spoke about, a little bit difficult maybe to gauge. But how do you expect uh, Hull to set up on Saturday? Um, it's a good question, actually, because I, I don't actually... I think he has a vague idea of the, the starting eleven he wants to play, and I think fans could probably guess at it. Um, and they'll probably maybe only get one or two wrong. Um, but I think the formation will be the most interesting point because he's been playing uh, a 4-4-2 um, in pre-season. We played a 4-3-3 last season. Um, but I think he's been trying to find a strike partner for Oscar so it gets the best out of him. Um, and obviously he can incorporate someone like Delap or Connolly into the side as well without losing a winger. But um, in the terms of the style of play Rosini wants to play, which is possession-based, play out from the back, you know, risk-taking. Um, the 4-4-2 doesn't, <clears throat> at least from the friendly games um, that we've seen so far, it doesn't seem to be the system that would benefit the possession base. The 4-4-2, it, 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 leaves, it leaves you too easy to get overrun in the middle. Um, the three in the middle works well because obviously you can play those those triangles, those interlinks and use your centre-backs and your full-backs to support that. But with the 4-4-2, it's, it doesn't seem to work. So whether or not he's been doing that as a bit of a red herring so that players and scouts from other teams look and go, he's probably going to set up in a 4-4-2 and try and throw them off. Um, I don't know. 
Um, but yeah, it will be interesting to see what system we use um, and and who he chooses to play actually up to, up front because he's got um, ample options now, which is something we couldn't say last season. So yeah, it'll be really interesting to see who he plays this season, whether or not Sean McLaughlin keeps his place above Jacob Greaves um, is another one. So yeah, very interesting. Yeah, if you want a little bit of optimism, Norwich City not won a home game uh, their opening day of the season since 2002. So there's a sure, few sure. sort of factors in in Hull City's favour on Saturday. I'm just going to try and nail you down for a score prediction. How you think the game's going to go, Ant? Uh, well, firstly, um, those kind of things are actually bad for us because if if a, a team's in desperate need of a win in any situation to end up end a run, we tend to do that for them. So that's probably a positive on your behalf. Um, but for us, I'm going to guess at. I'm going to say 1-1. I think it'll be a very close game. I think there'll be um, a few chances for both teams and it'll be opening day um, rust where we miss a few sitters each and come away with a point, but are relatively happy with it. Yeah, I think most Norwich fans will be hoping for three points, but yeah, I think if you gave us a point, we'd, we'd probably still take it at this point. Um, just want to round off the show. Do you want to plug where, where Hull City fans and Norwich fans can find your content, Ant? Oh, yeah. So we're on pretty much all your usual um, podcast providers. You have Apple, Spotify, you like that. Uh, we do we do video content on YouTube. Um, we've just started a new website as well uh, where we're going to do written content, so match previews, news about the club, you, youngsters, all that kind of stuff. So if you want to find us, we are on Twitter. It's uh, My handle's on here. It's at Hull underscore and underscore back. Um, you can follow us on there. We do try to get opposition fans on with us as well, so it is worth listening if you are an, an, an opposition fan. It's not just all Hull City and we try to be um, as as neutral as we can, um, obviously, in on, on the, in these situations. But, yeah, we appreciate any support we get, any subscribers or any followers. There we go. That's where you can go and find those guys. Uh, really appreciate your time, Ant, this evening. Um, of course, the big game is, is only just a matter of hours away now in terms mm. of the clock is ticking, under 48 hours to go. So really excited for what's hopefully going to be a positive season for Norwich and Hull. Um, I'm sure David Wagner's already feeling the pressure for a positive start. And as he said, it's press conference today to the fans, bring the energy, bring the noise, and hopefully Norwich City can start the season with three points. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. And I'll be back next week for a Southampton Terrace Talk uh, with a Southampton fan. Yeah.